This podcast discusses video games, modern culture, and technology, and these podcasters are big fat potty mouths. If you're younger than 18 or are easily offended, please stop this podcast now. Oh, and your mom says to take out the trash and do your homework. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Game Hounds. Game Hounds episode 279. We are recording on September 10th. I forgot to lower the volume here. September 10th. Sorry to break to blow out your uh, speakers there. September 10th, 2014, episode 279 of the Game Hounds. I'm Edie Sellers, and with me is Nikki Nicola and Holy Goalie. What's going on, boys and girls, and Nick? I'm own. separate. I'm it. <laughs> I'm all right with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm un. I'm a. I'm unique. Yep. I'm special. You're neuter general. General. N- n- Uncategorizable. Yeah. He's he's general neuter. General neuter. General neuter. Sir, reporting <laughs> for duty. <laughs> Expect all of you to salute me when I talk from now on. I meant to say gender neutral, but. I'm no. I'm not doing well today. I I did not sleep well. I did not get enough sleep, and I will blame one thing and one thing alone, destiny. Yeah, we'll talk about that later in depth. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what's really weird is uh, I I had an old monitor here, seventeen inch square monitor, right? That I've had for, CRT or flat screen. No, it was a flat screen. I I, I it's got to be six seven years old. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm just guessing it, just trying to put a figure out there, maybe longer. But uh, it finally st- it finally went. It's been kind of turning on and off on its own. Like I'll turn off the computer and I'll see the monitor on. And I'll go shut it off and it'll come back on. But the worst was when I was working and it shut off. It's like, okay, I can't have that. So I went down to, uh, to Best Buy to get a new monitor. They're all widescreen. Mm-hmm. I'm having like a wicked hard time adjusting to a 16 by 9 screen coming from a, a 4 by 3 or a 4 by 4 you know it is such a trip it's cool don't get me wrong because like all the pictures that I put up on Facebook or the league or Game Hounds or whatever they're all widescreen landscape you know mm-hmm. and on the shorter screen it's like okay look they look fine but on the widescreen they look phenomenal because now they can stretch out Right. And, and get some get some space underneath them so I can really see the detail. I'm like that's cool, but everything else, it's like oh my gosh, it's like a, it's like I'm in the front row of a movie theater. <laughs> it is it's so weird going to such a wide screen. Awesome. Well, I, that's a good thing. I'm glad that you got that. It is. It's neat. It's really neat. I've only had it a couple of days. I'm looking at it now. It's like holy cow. But the killer was is you know when you. You you know when you go into a store, what it, whether you're shopping for furniture or anything you bring into the house. It's so hard to gauge size in a department store. <laughs> so there's I'm a looking- joke in there somewhere that <laughs> I'm I it's well beyond my mental capacity at this point oh, to to, to, right to formulate it. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so I'm looking at these, mo- and of course I'm looking at like the 27s and the 30. I'm like, oh man, they're all in- in- inexpensive, really. They're all like 300 bucks or less. Yeah, I remember when a monitor was a I'm big spent- fat yeah. box and it cost you 800, 900 dollars. <laughs> ridiculous how expensive monitors were back in the day so i'm looking i'm like oh that would be great and the guy goes what how much room do you got i'm like oh that's a good point it says i don't even know what size monitor i have i have a 15 or a 17 i don't know and so i'm looking around i I settled on the 23 inch i think i got Mm -hmm. and boy i'm glad i did because it kind of fits right where the other one was and it i have a corner unit that i'm in and so it's hitting both the left and right sides of the corner if you can picture that Mm -hmm. If I had gone, I might have got away with 24, but if I went any bigger, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so it was so hard to judge size. So if I get one that's too small, I'm going to be so pissed. Yep. But I says, if I get one that's too big, I'm going to be too big. Yeah, if you get, that's almost as worse. In fact, I've frequently had, when we got a television, uh, a flat screen television, I had to constantly ratchet Kevin back from it's like, oh, this is not like, that's too big. What do you mean it's too big? There's no such thing as too big. I'm like, yes, there is. We have a small room. I do not want an entire wall consumed by a television. When I bought my first big screen TV, I had a, uh, I want to say I had a 32 inch four by three, you know, bubble TV, whatever they were, Mm -hmm. you know, standard TV, right? Right. And I remember I bought a big Mitsubishi 
and it was, I want to say 50 or 55 <laughs> inches, and it was one of the big deep ones. It was going back 10 to 12 years, you know, and it came in on the wheels, and they rolled it in and delivered it. It was it was this big monstrosity thing, right? And uh, I sat down. I was like, oh, I had to back the couch up a couple of feet. It was so big. Yeah. So close to me, and I was so used to this little 32-inch you know, that it's was overwhelming. Oh, it's like being in the front row of a, a movie theater. It's like, no, get, no, no, no. I get motion sickness. The last time, remember uh, a long time ago, Apollo 13 with uh, Tom Hanks was in the movie. Right. Theater. We went on a busy Saturday night and the only seats were like third or fourth row. And I and I I couldn't do it because I had to keep turning my head to see the screen. And I got motion sickness and I actually had to go stand at the back of the theater for the entire movie. <laughs> I need to have like the whole thing in front of me. I can't. I can't have stuff to the sides of me. Mm-hmm. It's just how I it just can't do it. It's motion sickness. So yeah. So between the widescreen and this thing here, it's boy, whoo! It's uh, it's it's different for us guys that uh, grew up in the seventies with the rabbit ears, you know. Yep. <laughs> Kevin Bullwear, by the way, in the chat room. You know, we should do this every week. Is announce the winner of the chat room. You know, the first person to come in. Okay. okay. Kevin Bullwear is the winner this week. AC Wraith comes in second. Corey Wallace comes in third. Andy Shaw was fourth. Win place and show. Yeah, win place show and wah wah wah. Win place show and get out. <laughs> and glue factory. Andy Shaw is the <laughs> glue factory. Uh, so yeah, games. Not that that the television screens wasn't a great or video computer screens wasn't a good good way to start the show but well, and uh if playing pc games now i can play some widescreen pc games yeah right? and you need to get into pc this, games. this is my work computer so it's really a work that i have the laptop that's a 17 inch widescreen for that but, <laughs> you know if i wanted to play like on live or something not processor heavy i could so it's kind of gaming related a little new screen you know Wh- whichever let's move on okay so uh all right we're gonna throw this out to the chat room we have two games to talk about Destiny and NHL 15, both of which very, very newsworthy. Which one should we talk about first? Oh, I could rip through the NHL in like three minutes. Okay. I, mean, you, could, I will I'm be impressed if you if you rip through NHL in three minutes. Yeah. You want me so, to time you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And go. With NHL 15, basically what's happened is they put out two different versions. They put out the old gen and the new gen. Obviously, new gen for Xbox One and PS4 and the old gen for the 360 and the PS3. The the older gen ones had all the modes that NHL 14 had. Your playoff mode, the winter classic, as far as it, everything was the same. Mm-hmm. You know, the winter classic, the playoffs, the, uh, the be a pro mode, everything was there in the new one with a little bit better presentation but if you wanted the unbelievable graphics and the smooth play and just the whole new presentation the nbc sports presentation you got the new gen and i picked up the uh the ps4 version last night and i actually snuck out of work i come home and popped it in because i knew it would be an update file it was a huge update file then i went back to work for two hours it come home and it was all done loading i was like that worked out pretty good so i got to play a little bit last night and uh, yeah, buttery smooth. It is so good. It's ridiculous. Um, you guys take over. I have a phone call coming in. Talk about Destiny. I'll finish NHL in a second. Well, that's actually a good segue because Destiny like feels really smooth. Hello. Hello. Yeah. What? Uh, we're gonna talk about Destiny, right? Oh, well, that that was he already did it. Well, no, he said he had to take a phone call. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I stepped away to go get oh coffee. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everyone, like, <laughs> boom, boom. The hosts are dropping like flies. <laughs> I just stepped away to get more coffee. The minute I stepped away. Oh, man. The magic is broken. You've now seen the little man behind the curtain. <laughs> Is I don't when, do that often. The, I will usually do that. I, I did not get a refill yeah, my coffee yeah. right as I started. So I figured, okay, Gully says three minutes. That'll be 20 minutes. I can go get some no, coffee. The, the actual truth is that whenever one of us is talking, the other, the other two are like gone. Are out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, where were we? <laughs> uh, he, I was just saying it was a, he had a good segue because Destiny feels really smooth. Um, yeah. Destiny... 
Um, it's a little early to tell. And here's a little bit of my, if I was going to take the shine off of Destiny, because it, it's a fantastic game. It, I, even now, am, everything feels good. The, the, the sparrows, the, the vehicles feel fun to drive the guns feel fun in fact you and i played last night and we had a um a whole different weapon we had a sword for a short period yeah. of time which was so much fun so everything feels great but if i was gonna say, make any complaints about it it's that because they did the alpha and then they did the beta the first i'm only level what eight now at this point the f entire um, Earth, old Earth stuff, we've done so many times. Yeah, I've gone through it twice already. Yet. I've done through it way more than twice. And because I did it several times with the Alpha and then several times with the Beta. I am so freaking bored with that planet at this point, especially knowing there are more planets out there. So I'm excited to go to the moon, but I think that that was kind of one of the the mistake of the way that they marketed it. it was great that they put out this alpha and then put out the beta but it's kind of sucks because now we are all so weary of those missions and we know what those missions are there's what little story we had there is not any more story than that now I, I really am a little concerned about the story not developing like it should have I was hoping that they would have fleshed out the story and made it set it more comfortably in stone so you understood why you were doing what you're doing instead of just shooting people they did so yeah it's still like weirdly anti explaining anything to the point where you walk around the tower and there's like all these merchants mm -hmm. and there's all these different forms of currency but the game seems to like refuse to explain how to get each of these currencies what the difference is like what is one versus the other and i don't know if it, it feels it feels like unfinished i don't know that it feels unfinished i think that i think it well the game itself feels finished the well yes the game story like... at this point but also it could just be fatigue because we've heard the story so many times that we're no longer paying attention. I mean, I know every line of the entire Earth thing. Every line. I wasn't paying attention in the beta, and I still wasn't paying attention. Right. I don't it's, know. It's... I, I don't care about the story. I, I just mean, like, in terms of explaining, like, what the new order, what is it, new monarchy versus, like, voice of the dead, like, all these different factions, and there's no sense of, like, what, these factions all why they exist right what exactly what was it new war. new war or future war society and death cult and yeah i agree they don't do a very good job of explaining yeah. the mechanics of the game are fabulous though oh yeah and like what you said about uh earth i think is probably going to be its ultimate downfall is because you know there's not going to be that many planets there's like maybe five sections uh and once you go through those a couple times you can be like well i've done this all i'm bored of it i yeah. want new content well I'm we'll out. see mark Korbach so, makes a interesting comment in the um in the chat room he says it feels like a lot of great parts from other games not feeling there's a real unique heart to this ip yet yes that's exactly what it feels like feels like what makes what makes a game unique in a, the biggest thing or the most obvious thing most easily accessible thing to users is the story that's what every game has that's completely different than any other game is the story and i just there's not enough there's not enough heart there's not enough depth to it at this point but granted we are only at level 6 i i i don't expect much of the story yeah, but, I'm, you know, I'm hoping. Ultimately, where it succeeds is that it's just fun to play. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Hell of fun to play. Uh, the differences between the beta and the um, 
in the the regular game is that certain things are more available than others. You don't find nearly as many chests. You find a whole lot more spin metal and the other stuff that you can trade in for faction points with the vanguards. Um, what else is different about it? Oh, well, a slice. Slice 7 said that factions come into play at level 20, but they don't explain that. Mm. So, okay, that might be something. Okay, so, yeah. yeah, something to hold out for. I'm I'm, I'm certainly not disappointed. I'm not sorry I bought it. I am, oh my God, happy that I bought the digital edition. Wow, am I happy I bought the digital, digital edition. Because the midnight release parties and the midnight release lines were reportedly nasty. We were playing with a listener... Um, uh, uh, Richard last night and he went to the midnight release and he said yeah it was insane that he lives in Chicago and that he had shown up GameStop had opened two hours early you couldn't buy the game but you could park and hang out in the store which is what he did and he said that when he got there you know it was late at night there's tons of parking by the time that the game released there was no parking anywhere there's cars everywhere so it was pretty, pretty hellacious. And I saw um, on my Facebook page, not just stuff from Bungie, but from other people I know that are gamers and podcasters that had taken pictures of the lines, even during the day for the release. And people were lining up. And it was, wow. Wow. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a midnight release quite like this before. This is big. Uh, there was a story that piss boy posted on a Facebook that says uh, it made 500 million in one day. Yeah, that's what I was about. One's one of my uh, news items. Well, it shipped 500 million. There's a difference. That wasn't sold. Oh, was it? Did it say ship? That was a ship number. And okay, because they haven't done the sold numbers yet. But um, yeah, they shipped 500 million dollars for one for the first day, or 500 million dollars in copies. But yeah, that, that being yeah, said, that's, that's also thing. just because they shipped it doesn't mean that has nothing to do with the numbers. Because no, like yeah, me, I was a digital download, and a lot of people digital downloaded. And um, also, I doubt that everything they shipped for day one got sold. Oh yeah, because you you don't want that. No, because that means on day two nobody, nobody can buy it. Right, <laughs> which would be <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Uh, Mark Humble, it says the avatar face mask situation is odd with great hair and face options, then spend most of the time covered up. <laughs> Point. Yeah, that's why you play as a robot. So you look like you got a helmet on even when you don't. Mm -hmm. He says even chat with the NPCs with faces covered. It keeps you from relating the characters of people like the devs think every character has to be the next master chief. Point well taken. Agreed. Master chief was kind of his own dude. Yeah. Um, but uh, so far, I have finally gotten to the moon. The moon's hella fun. Um, I, I'm, it's, it's so early to tell. Here's another thing that I'm a little critical of the game about. And this is really just kind of niggling about things. The fact that I, you say that there's five planets. Mm -hmm. There's no, I don't know. How do you know? Because I saw a map before it released. That Bef people right. You it. saw a map before it released that may or may not have been the real map. There's no way to know how big this game is, even now that you have the retail release. There's no way to know. It doesn't... Like Warframe. At least you had a sense of how many planets there were. Well, that, yeah, you could you could see the whole map. You could see the whole map. You couldn't travel to all of the planets, but you could at least see how many planets they are. There are, and that is frustrating to me because that was one of Goalie's questions, one of my questions, one of your questions. Mm -hmm. So it's leaving a lot up to conjecture and people saying, "Oh, it's not going to be that big a game. The campaign's going to be really small." La 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 la. It's like I can't argue against it. You know, I think then again, is... they can't argue for it. There's no way to know. There is value in like holding off the reveal of a world map for you know several hours. My roommate was recently playing through Final Fantasy VII again, mm -hmm. and I was remembered. I was reminded that the first like oh, six hours of that game take place in this city, like where you're kind of this uh, terrorist freedom fighter fighting against this giant corporation, and you do that for a good long while, and then 
once you actually leave and suddenly on the world map is this sense of holy shit this game is huge so there is value i want to say holding that back but i don't think destiny uh has a big enough world to sell that that reveal remind me uh, mass effect the the first mass effect mass effect one remind me how that started because i can't remember i can remember how mass effect three started I think it started with you automatically on the planet where your Spectre test is going on. Oh, Citadel. You're right. And that was the same situation where I'm like, yeah. oh, get off the Citadel. Once you're off the Citadel, it's a great game. Yeah, it's like first right. you test, and then you go to the Citadel. And then once you get on Normandy and you look at your map and you're like, oh, dude, this I is can a big like game. go to three, four different planets. Right. Okay. So yeah. This is, this is a, a decent sized game. I was worried it was going to be small. No, we're, we're talking about Mass Effect. Oh, Mass Effect. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this, this has been the show of people walking away. <laughs> I hate your specialist already. I hate that whoever called you just right now because the minute you started talking, I'm like, oh, I forgot to get coffee right before. It's okay. I'll sneak over to the coffee pot. Go get some coffee and jump. Come right back. And of course, you left and then Nick is like by himself on the show there was actually a comment in the chat room i forgot who made it that said nick carrying the show by himself is let's see nick running solo is the funniest moment ever <laughs> you know i like had a really great segue to destiny and i feel like i teed it up perfectly i tossed the ball to you and it sailed and then just like landed in an empty field <laughs> Uh, that's because I was over in the back picking daisies. That's what yeah, I did in the outfield. I, I have to take that call, unfortunately. That's so. all right. No, it's, no, it's no, no problem. You weren't the problem. I was the problem. I fully admit that. So have you guys started talking about the Destiny yet? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Feels great. Uh, guns are fun. Um, the weapons are fun. The vehicles it, it's are super fun. fun to play. Yes. Everything else. Yeah, we're sense. yeah. Everything else, the jury's still out. I haven't necessarily decided it's bad, but the jury is still out. Story, I haven't decided the story is going to develop. It's ha- it's it's essentially. You played the beta, right, Gully? I played the beta. I played with um, my wife and some of the other listeners. And we love the beta. Okay, the first, pretty much the first, I would say two to three hours of the game is the beta. Well, the, how I played it. So probably the first hour, hour and a half. It's fine, which is fine. Is the beta. Was, you know, is, is what people were suggesting on the internet, which you know, you know, shouldn't believe everything anyway. But just so they were saying this is going to be a short campaign. I'm, we, there's no way to know. And we were actually saying that that's kind of frustrating is that at this stage, because I have just gotten to the moon, which is the next planet. Technically not a planet, but the next location. Yeah, yeah. Um. It doesn't, there's no map. So we can't see how far we are. And we were kind of, that's why we got into the idea of Mass Effect is that you don't, some games for a couple of hours at the beginning of the game, you don't have a sense of how big the game is until well, you Kevin, get to a certain point. And then all of a sudden the map opens up and you can see it. Kevin Bulwell said that people have maxed the level and gotten through all the planets. Mm-hmm. So... You know, people have hit max and got through all the planets in less than a day. Ooh. And that says a lot. That Ooh. That's what he says, and that's what I say. Because when you think about, like, people do that with World of Warcraft expansions all the time. You know, they finish it in a day. They just power through it. But those are expansions. Mm-hmm. Not the core game. Right. I don't think anyone finished World of Warcraft. <laughs> well, World of Warcraft is an MO. Is, no, no. World of Warcraft is supposedly is a massive game. So, so you've you've seen the it's also on, PC on the Destiny. So you've seen some of the places you can go, and this is it, it's a heck of a lot bigger than a demo. Uh, well, I have only been on Earth, which is the was the demo, and to the moon, and only done a couple of things on the moon. I'm from the moon on is going to be entirely virgin territory for me. Yeah. I think okay. then you go to Venus, Mars, and like an asteroid belt. Okay. All right. Well, we're waiting. We're waiting. Um, this doesn't do... I'm actually really excited to also play some of the competitive because I played a lot of that during the beta. I, and I really the enjoyed it. I hated the competitive. But then again, if I never really played with anybody I knew. But yeah. I'm terrible at it. But, yeah, never but did it's also, it's been a long time since I kind of played a competitive shooter. Yeah. And this one, you know... When it feels as good as it does, the 
competitive part is like it really is actually and i think i was kind of doubting this before it's a good selling point because it feels so good to play Mm -hmm. man if i could get that sword in competitive (laughs) that would make me go in there that sword was awesome and it was a part of a particular mission so you got the sword for the mission and then the sword disappeared but that sword was freaking awesome i didn't mind dying only because i knew nick could pick up the sword and play with the sword oh that was fun um this doesn't do cross-platform right no yeah this would have been so much more fun if it was cross-platform. so it, it plays just like the beta now the most of the little runs there it's three person right it's, it's all three person for the co-op so far that's isn't that weird? Yeah. It's and I kind of a weird number, yeah. No, I remember when we were at PAX at the uh, Seattle Indie Expo. I was playing this Viking game, and it was kind of like a, a brawler, you know, like the Viking Turtles crawl, game. Viking Viking brawl, brawl. That's what it was, yeah. Uh, but it was a three-person game, and I asked them like, "What? Why three people? That's kind of weird." And they had a, the perfect answer: "There's only three people on the team." So they can only test it with three people at once. <laughs> See, they have an, a decent excuse. Or, or maybe Bungie is just a lot smaller <laughs> than we think. That's why it takes everything so long to come out. It's only three guys. No, I, I don't think that's their problem. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm not unhappy with the game. I'm not unhappy that I bought it. And I'm... Uh, I am enjoying it, and it's not the be all end all. It's not it 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 ain't no Mass Effect. Put it that way. Okay. It's not Dragon Age. Dragon Age will still always reign supreme in my head, the way that Assassin's Creed does for you, Nick. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm I'm not upset that I got it. Not I've upset. been jonesing for like a triple A game for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like this will nicely. Uh, do me over until Shadow of Mordor comes out at the very end of the month. Yeah, which we were, I was doing my best to try to explain Shadow of Mordor, and it's when no matter how you explain it, or at least no matter how I explain it, it sounds terrible. <laughs> I don't know. I like what you said at PAX. It's a revenge fantasy where you're fighting your way up a chain of mob bosses, except in the Lord of the Rings universe. Right, and with Assassin's Creed mechanics. Yeah. But that being said, you know, I explained it to Goalie, and Goalie's like, oh, it sounds terrible. I'm like, this well, is so not a Goalie game. Goalie will... has terrible taste. Yeah, you know, Goalie, I ban you. I forbid you to buy that game because you will hate it. No problem. Hey, oh but my God, you're going to hate that game. Getting back to the Destiny talk. So the those little vehicles you drove around the planet. The Sparrows. On. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep. Did, did you guys ever upgrade and get a better one? I, I actually did in the beta. Did in the beta I as well. I found one in a gold chest, an upgrade. Oh, there was one on the moon too. I got that actually could, would shoot, and that was kind of Yeah, fun. there's, oh, cool. well, when you get onto the moon, uh, the, the the dudes on the, you're fighting on the moon have those, and you can shoot one off of them and steal their bike, which yeah, is great. Okay. That's what and I yeah, those things are great, because I would just, I would run those actually into buildings. Like, <laughs> run it into a building and just shoot the shit out of the building, because those things are powerful. Um, they're essentially got a cannon on the front of it. So yeah, those are, those are yeah. great. And I'm looking forward to upgrading. And that's, I think where I'm really going to start enjoying a lot of this game is having the upgraded vehicles. When you can shoot with those, that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, in fact, I'm kind of, I told, I think when you and I were playing on the moon, I said, Nick, grab that bike. I don't know if you did. No, I did. I did. Okay. Did you, I knew that, it was, that one shot. Cause I, I that one had on a cannon moon. on it. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. Did I, you I've shoot? used those before. Okay. All right. I, I played on the moon during the beta. Yep. And if, if you're playing Destiny now, and this is to anybody who's listening, if you are playing Destiny now, do yourself a favor. Before you go running into the melee and start, sh- you know, shooting everybody up in the back of the face, stop and look up. My God, that is a gorgeous game. Every time I look up, it's like, There's always something in the sky or on the roof or around the area that's worthy of looking at. So just enjoy the, the beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Even in like Diablo too, sometimes I just stop, look over cliffs. It's like, wow, that's that's kind of nice. Nick <laughs> stops and looks over cliffs and then promptly jumps off them. <laughs> nice. 
So have you guys upgraded your main ship yet? No. Yeah. That's another thing that's the difference between the um beta and the uh and this and the, the regular game. Money's a lot harder to come by because you said that, but chests are a lot harder to come by. I don't actually feel that. Um the chests that you and I got last night were the most chests that I've seen more chests that I've seen in the game's total. And I've looked in places where I expected chests to be. And more times they're not than I think I've I'd only had three or four chests prior to us playing last night. <laughs> I think we got five last night. Money's harder. Much harder. I just remember that in the beta, uh, I hit the cap of eight, level eight, mm -hmm. and then had to play for a fair amount longer before I had enough money to upgrade that main ship. And right now, I'm at level six, and I'm kind of halfway to uh, a ship right now. And I feel like I've been accumulating money at pretty much the same rate. I'm pretty close to being able to afford a ship, but I don't necessarily want to buy a ship because, A, I don't know what that will do, you know, how that it's, it's practically changes the game. Right. It's, a, it's cosmetic. And B, it would mean every all the money I had. Yeah. Kevin Bulware said, he says in the chat room, I finally started Bounties and Rifts. Those haven't been discussed on the show yet. And Sly Simon says rifts are awesome. I just I don't know what a rift is. I don't know bounties what a rift is just either. Bounties. Yeah, here's here's what that that the rifts are basically. You know, uh, Sly was talking about that, and then we did with some with Chaos and Tien and those guys. Is you, you collect these um these things uh, uh, keystones, keystone shards, or whatever they are. And if you get I don't know if it's five or ten of them. When you go in, if you're in adventure mode and you go into one of the towns into like the safe. Oh, wait, you're talking about Diablo, Diablo rifts. No, yeah. he's talking about. I I think he's talking because he's talking about bounties. They don't have. I think he's talking about Diablo. You, is he Diablo? Rifts. Oh, all right, never mind. For yeah. a moment, there, I also thought you were talking about Warframe. Because he said bounties, and I, were there bounties? Oh, there were bounties in in Diablo. Never mind, never mind. Because I just was thinking when he said bounties, I was thinking Destiny. Yeah, we went into Bounties. a couple you know. of big rifts. Edie, you went to a rift. Yeah, 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 huh? yeah. So this is Diablo 3. Yes, yes. yes. Bounties yeah. and rifts are yeah, awesome. Games all mixed up. It's, it's been a very crazy show here. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, uh, the... I need more coffee. The ADHD show. I'm going to go make some coffee. We just can't... Look at the pretty lights. Who are you again? I know. <laughs> I could finish my NHL talk as long as I don't get another phone call. Yeah. I was almost done anyway. Oh, yeah. It just... It just the, 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 the PS4 version plays so nice. It looks so nice. But it's missing features. It's missing features like you used to be able to go back and replay hits and goals at any time, and you can't do that now. And the ultimate fuck you on that game is that those features that are missing are there in the old gen. On the 360 and the PS3, those features are still there. They took them yeah. out for the next gen, which yeah. you have to just wonder what the hell were they thinking. <laughs> They they were concentrating on the looks of the game and the presentation, and they wanted to get the game out on time. You know and what? Seriously, I can make a beautiful looking game that doesn't do anything either. But they, yeah, but again, they're they're talking about trying to add some of those things in updates, which I know it's kind of you know whatever. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But I, you know, I, I gotta say that it's it, it, it's it's really a tough thing to, to choose. I don't know if I want to get the old version, the new version, because. I like the fact that like, when I'm playing a game, I can go in and look and I can at any time in, on the 360 version, I could go in and, re and watch a replay of a goal. Mm -hmm. I don't know how often you're going to do that. I don't know. But I used to like to do that. I sit there and say, let me go watch that goal again or watch that hit or whatever. And it d does a few other things. You know, there's a lot of modes. When you get into the, the dashboard of the PS4, well, version, th it's pretty bare. Isn't it missing like legacy mode or something? Well, there's a be a pro mode, it's called, where you create yourself. And in, in the older version, you would create yourself and start in the minors and then get drafted by your team. Mm -hmm. Now what you do is you create yourself and you put yourself on a team. Oh, yeah, you know, it's not that little, big. little bit of a difference, but it takes a little of the edge off, you know, yeah, it, it really does. Uh, and I heard you couldn't edit the players either. So if you wanted to go in and say, take, you know, whoever Wayne Gretzky, if he was in the game and, and edit him, his numbers, you couldn't. Uh, you can't just jump into playoffs like you could in the older version. You got, you know, there's a season mode, but there's not a playoff mode. So you almost have to play the season to get to the playoffs. Little stuff like that that irks you. Actually, the the be a pro mode on the old one was kind of like the the basketball one, whereas they they ask you uh, you were in a press conference after the game, they ask you questions and you have to answer. They gave you certain answers to to pick from, and uh, 
it was almost kind of like the Dragon Age there when you had to, you know, pick certain answers, you know, and that would affect how your team liked you and how your family liked you and how the fans liked you, how you answered the questions. And uh, it was it was neat. I mean, it's not part of the game, but it was kind of neat to have. And no, that's not in there on the new one. So that they just took out a lot of things in the new one that they may put in again, and they'll probably be back next year. But the biggest one was the online team play. Mm-hmm. Whereas what that was is you took between two and six people, you created a team, and everybody played one person. And if you didn't have six players, then the computer would fill in the, the, the extra spot. But you would play another team of humans with everybody playing one guy. So instead of me just playing you and we control everybody in our team, it was, you know, me, you, and Nick, and, you know, Kelly Brown and Chris Brown against – you know, five or six other people, and we only controlled one player. And then at the end of the game, if you want a loss, you know, it, it, it created a standings. Uh-huh. So it'd be like, okay, the game hounds are two and two in the standings, and, uh, you know, somebody else is four and oh. And so you could, you know, and if you, you know, you won enough games, you got bumped up into a better division. If you lost games, you, got, you bumped down to the bottom division. That was a huge selling point uh, a few years ago for the NHL is that online team play, whereas uh-huh. you played as a team. And you needed a minimum of two two humans to play. So on you know, each team or each you know on versus each, on each team. Okay. So in other words, let's just say we had the five of us playing, and one night me and Nick get on, and it's like, hey, we can let's play a game for the game hounds. We could play with just the two of us. Oh, okay. But I couldn't just play for the game hounds. You needed two humans to play this team game. Is kind of how it went. All right, makes so, sense. So, but they took that out. Or at least they said that they might put it in later, but that was the big selling point with a lot of people. I don't play that anymore, so that that doesn't bother me. But some of the other little things do. I, I you know, I enjoyed the playoff mode. I enjoyed some of the the be a pro mode. Um, little things like that. It's, it just feels like a stripped down version, but it's a beautiful stripped down version. Mm-hmm. And uh, like uh, Richard was saying last night, buttery smooth. It, it just doesn't describe it. It's it's gorgeous. It's buttery smooth. It's just missing. All the features that were in, were in the last game, and it, it, you start to shake your head. It's it's like if you bought a car that drove unbelievable, but it didn't have GPS or power window. <laughs> That's how it feels. didn't have power steering. I've had that, you know, some of the like, nicest cars. It's like, do I take this car that drives unbelievable, but it doesn't have satellite radio, GPS, or power windows, or do I take a car that doesn't drive as well but has all the features? That's the decision you have to make, at least right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Bulware asks, "Is there a season mode? I heard there's a general manager mode. It's just not a, yeah, but not just a season mode. That's how you play the season mode. It's in the general. It's called GM. Con- it's not GM Connected. They took that out. GM Connected was you be a GM and you play online against other GMs. Uh, it's a local GM mode, general manager mode, where you select a team and you can make all the decisions and the whole bit." And you play a season through that. I haven't tried that yet, mm. but you can play a season through this GM mode, which, mm-hmm. yeah, whatever. I did create, you know, myself in the game. Uh, it seemed to work out okay, although I thought I had a lot more choices for equipment. Like, I actually, in the 360 version of the last NHL 14, I actually, the skates I actually wear were in the game, and I put them on me. And the gloves I actually wear are in the game. So I could, I could dress myself up as I normally play hockey. And it was kind of neat. This time around, instead of having 12 pairs of gloves, you had eight to choose from. Instead of 15 pairs of skates, you had nine. So they've, they've scaled back some of that too, which is kind of kind of a bummer. So it just, it's a, just a little bit less of all the goodies that, that made the game really kind of cool. But the, the, you just can't argue with the gameplay. It is, it is really smooth. So there's your choice, people. You want just a standard gameplay with all the goodies, then you buy the PS3 or the 360 version. If you want unbelievable gameplay and presentation and graphics and the smoothness of it all, but missing features, then you go PS4. And it's too bad we have to make a choice because on, on next gen, it should have all been in there on next gen. There shouldn't have been any question. Mark Carmblet says, my truck has no power steering, windows, radio, GPS, dashboard, etc. Best truck I ever owned. Can't even lock the doors. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, it's kind of like Nick's car. Nick, have you ever uh, gotten a new car? Yeah. That you did? I didn't. I I had an old car, and then like the engine blew up, and I got my new the uh, uh, Nissan that I have now. Okay, is that the one that? Which one was the one that I was in with the broken down seats, and it it sounds when it runs. 
The one you picked me up at the airport, you know, we were you drove. Uh, it was probably the Nissan, but <sighs> I've gotten it like fixed up since then because I needed to get the engine checked. <laughs> I don't think I've watched it since then, so it <laughs> looks, uh, oh boy. Oh, funny. Oh boy. Yeah, your car is really shitty. Yeah, new cars. I think the first new car I had, I think it was 25 or 26. <clears throat> yep. And uh, I had been buying used cars, and somebody stole my, my hot rod, and I went down. I bought a stripped-down SUV. It was an Isuzu Rodeo at the time. And it was the cheapest <laughs> SUV you could find. But it was like five grand cheaper than everything else, and... uh that was my first new car. Oh, your first new car. Oh, my was, God. Was, it's like it, being it, in love. <gasps> standard AM, FM cassette in back in 92. If it even had a cassette, it was you know, no power windows, no nothing. It was it was stripped down, but it was brand new. Yeah, my, my first new car. I was in my 30s when I got my first new car, but I got it fully tricked. Well, not entirely fully tricked out, but mostly fully tricked out. Subaru. I have still in the backyard. The Subaru Impreza, the mighty, mighty green Sub. Oh, I loved that car. I would see it. I would look down on it from like where I where I worked in the newsroom was like on the second floor and I would park in, in the street in front of it. And I would look down and see <laughs> it outside when I was getting a cup of coffee. I could see it through the window and I'd be like, oh, that's my car. That's yeah, my it car. was pretty good. I had that thing for seven years, I think. Really? So just- that's it? I had a lo- I had my my new car for a long time, and, I, and it hurt to trade it in. I think I had it from ninety two to ninety eight, and I traded it in for a little pickup truck. And I was like, man, I've had this this car a long time. <laughs> Single owner, it was tough letting it go. <laughs> yeah, your first one's always your best. So anyway, we just com- completely so got talk. derailed. That's car talk. Thank you for listening to car talk. It's all over the place. If you, if you're still with us, God bless you, because we are just all over the place today. <laughs> You know, with all the but yes, uh, so the hockey is great. I'm gonna have to pick up that destiny now. That you guys convinced me, but no, no, I would hold off. I would wait another week. I would, I, I would let us get a little farther into the game because if it's too short, I haven't decided if it's too short a a uh, campaign yet. Because it may be that this campaign is too short, and if it is, then it's yeah. not worth it to you because you don't like competitive. I don't like competitive. I like the co-op, but if the co-op's really short, right? Then- that's I would hold off. Do not pick it up. Just hey, yet. And I don't want to cut into my Diablo. I'm still, like I said, I'm just figuring out rifts. I'm just figuring out bounties. Mm, but Diablo's still awesome. I'm finally getting some good stuff in that game. It's like I went probably a good solid three or four days of playing, 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 and just having the same weapon in my hand because I never found anything better. Yeah, the Demon Hunter, by the way, totally overpowered. Oh, my God, so overpowered. Yeah, I think that's what Sly has. He walks in and he just, just he's, he's annihilates like everything. Yeah, I I, I, I restarted. I, I sat a crusader and I just restarted and did a well, not just, but I restarted for you guys and then it's I think it's like at a level twenty, um, demon hunter and I, just it's no question. You just mow everything down. Granted, I have the advantage of because I have leveled up my uh, crafting, I can actually kit the demon hunter out with some really good gear. But even so, just. It's it's like bringing a machine gun to a knife fight. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Uh, do you want to hit the news? Meet that time. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about all that we've been playing. All right, so let's hit the news. Come on, hit it. There you go. You hit the news. <laughs> this is the Game Pounds news. <laughs> that was the silliest. That was the lamest thing. This is the Game Hounds News, the news, news, and commentary of the week in gaming with Gamer Edie, Holy Goalie, and Nick Nicola. First item is Mojang. Mojang is selling. Well, so reportedly, rumor. maybe. Rumored yes. to be selling. Mojang is rumored to be selling, to very, or at least rumors have it that it's very close to being sold to Microsoft for more than $2 billion. Reports mm-hmm. say the deal could be signed as early as this week. Um, and just to give you, of course, we all know that Mojang has sold more than 50 million copies of Minecraft since it was initially released in 2009. It's earned more than a hundred million dollars in profit last year from the game and merchandise. That's not even to mention all of the, um, like the, the, the partnership deals they have with Twinkies and Ho-Hos and all the other, you know, branding stuff that they've done. They've made a bucket ton of money. 
Um, the game is already available on Xbox and it is available on PlayStation, PCs, and smartphones. Um, I have not bought it. I've seen other people playing it. I just don't see any reason to buy Minecraft for the PlayStation 4. But I may change my mind. If Microsoft buys it, I'm definitely going to download it because it would not surprise me if Microsoft buys it and then pulls Minecraft for the PlayStation 4. Um, but reports also say that if it's sold, that Notch has pretty much said that once he's done the trans the transfer, you know, gotten everything settled, the transfer's done, he's out. Mm. He's going to go live on his own private island somewhere. Or maybe just make another game. Um, but, yeah, so that would be, I don't know, there's a part of me that's a, think it's, thinks it's a weird deal because Notch has always been very outspoken about everything but in particular he was very outspoken and not always very complimentary to Microsoft and its products I mean he says flat out that Windows 8 was horrible I hate Windows 8 yeah and he flat out said that you know that that Microsoft is making a huge mistake and and he may not even release you know Microsoft Minecraft on Windows 8 simply because it's such a piece of shit so, uh, so yeah, he's, he's not always, he's never couched his language to be nice to Microsoft for any reason. So it'd be an interesting change of voice for the voice of my, of Minecraft. If Microsoft were that voice. And I could see that brought a lot of attention to it. <clears throat> I'll do the Minecraft thing. Yeah, I don't yeah. do too much of it. I know, but it's an it's, interesting thing. It's kind of no, it you know, is, and it's interesting that Microsoft would pay so much. No, no, <laughs> that that it does not. No, there's a Minecraft movie due out. There's Minecraft television shows in the works. Minecraft Wait, is, is there really? Yeah. Do you have, do you have like art news stories to back this up? <laughs> you just look, just Google it. Minecraft here. Let me. I'll pull it up. Minecraft, you. I know there was a documentary that came out for free on YouTube. No, there's reportedly a might. Well, I'm. I think it's not even reportedly. I think it's confirmed that there is a Minecraft movie in the works. Minecraft movie. Minecraft movie in the works at Warner Brothers. CNET. This is dated February 27th. Following the massive success of the Lego Movie. It sounds like blockbuster, block-based blockbusters, a pun no one could possibly refrain from using, are a surefire recipe for Hollywood success. Up next, the Minecraft movie. And I'm reading this article straight from CNET, article by uh. Nick Stat. Um, let's see. Dropping a bombshell on Twitter in the form of a sneaky 128-character admission, Minecraft creator Marcus Notch Pearson revealed that he and Mojang, the studio, the 34-year-old Swedish developer forum to manage the title and its expansion, are working with Warner Brother Pictures to develop a film around the game. So, yes. There is a Minecraft movie. There's also all the Microsoft, or the Minecraft branding on everything. It's, yeah, there's, this is, this is not Star Wars, but I would say it's the next big thing as far as being able to um, make money off of it. Did they ever get the Angry Birds movie out? Or is that just a TV show now? They were talking about that, weren't they? I know there was a TV show, I think, right? Or a cartoon or something. Angry on Birds has very much jumped the shark, by the way. Yeah, it's on. It's, it's Angry Birds movie, February 18th, tw 2016, it looks like. Oh, Due definitely. out in 2016. Yeah, too late. Too late. July 1st, 2016's right now. Yeah, it's too late. Missed it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem with these things is that they... It, it, that and it may very well be that Minecraft's the same way, that Minecraft is going to jump the shark before uh, Microsoft really turns it into a money machine. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, my uh, Black Void says there's several sets of Minecraft Legos, which I think is hilarious since it pretty much is freaking Legos. <laughs> <laughs> um so anyway uh somebody said pratt no not pratt nick stat s-t-a-t-t -T. i'm looking at it right now and it's stat nick stat i don't know him 
It's at Nick Stat with two T's at the end on Twitter. Uh, so yeah, it's that's that's kind of huge that some thirty-seven-year-old is selling his company for two more than two billion dollars. Man, do I feel old? I feel like all these tech companies are so vastly uh, overvalued. Mm, I don't that's know not that's Minecraft one of them that isn't. Two billion. I don't think that that Oculus Rift is worth whatever they pay for it. Yeah, that was like two billion too. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's a bunch of things that are not worth that. Oh, by the way, speaking of not worth it, did you see the anything about the new iPhone? Uh, and the I saw iWatch. That it was a huge iPhone, and that's yeah. just an iWatch. Yeah, there's a huge iPhone. There's a littler iPhone, and then there's the iWatch. The iWatch. Eh, there's something cool about it, but it is still a little weird. I don't necessarily want them want anything reading my heart rate and knowing where I am at any particular moment. Um, it's Kevin's all about it. I think it says it's, connect Dona. <laughs> What? What? No, no. I did not buy the. You notice I did not buy the new Connect. That it, it creeped me out too. Mm. I'm happy with my Pebble. My Pebble does exactly the things that I need it to do for the moment. But the iWatch, there's a lot of things about it that are pretty cool. Really? I still don't get the watch. The watch. Well, you saw how my Pebble works, right? Yeah. Okay. It, imagine seems... my Pebble working that way, and it. It, my Pebble also does control my iPhone, but controlling it better, having access to your photos on your phone, and more importantly, being able to draw on the screen, and then actually being able to reply to your email to your uh, texts on your phone because it it the the. But how do you reply through the phone through the watch? Um, what they say, according to what I saw, was that the phone analyzes the text they use their you know siri technology analyzes the text that comes in and figures out what are the most likely answers you're going to be able to give and you can just touch an answer um another cool thing about it is uh. that you use the maps on it i'm like you know <coughs> pardon me you know how like when we were walking around Seattle and we were looking at our phones and we would get mixed up like do we turn here or the next one and you sit there and you look at your phone and you're like uh what this one will do is you put in the directions for walking and then you start walking and it will buzz your hand in one particular way when you get to a point where you need to turn right and it will buzz your hand in a different way when you get to a point where you need to turn left. So you will essentially not even have to look at your phone. Your your watch will direct you by buzzing you. Couldn't your phone do that? Technically, your phone could do that, I guess. But they don't have it into the phone. Because they're lazy. Maybe. They probably, they'll probably have it in with this new phone. <laughs> you know, this, I'm getting one of the new phones only because my phone is just... Oh, my God. Are you getting, like, one of the huge ones? Yeah, I'm going to get one of the bigger ones. Oh, wow. Wow. So, but I'm not going to get the huge memory. Kevin's saying, you're going to be sorry. Whatever. It just means I have to not take as many pictures. I can live with that. I don't really use my phone to take a lot of pictures anyway. I know. I actually feel like a better gadget is the the new 3DS. Not the one we were talking about last week, but it's just a new, basically a new color that looks like an NES controller. <laughs> That's all. Neat. But that's, yeah, that's neat. That seems like a better value. Oh, and the other thing about the iWatch that is interesting is it doesn't come out until next year, at the beginning of next year, like February 2015, which I think is such a mistake on their part. Well, it's not a mistake. It probably has to do with supply chains, but they're going to miss Christmas. So I'm not going to get one this year, if I get one at all. Well, you know whoever invented that was reading a whole bunch of uh, Dick Tracy comics when they were a kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, that, we're, so, we're, we're definitely getting to that. Yeah. So, um, you got anything? Because I got stuff still. Uh, Watch Dogs is actually coming out on the Wii U. <sighs> Damn it. That was my It was article. announced November 19th. November 18th. Oh, yes. 18th. That's the day. North America. And then it's coming to Europe on the 21st. Yes. And according to the release notes, users are going to be able to bring up 
and an, a quote unquote detailed and interactive map of Chicago on the gamepad. And that off TV play is also supported. I don't know. It's a shitty game and it's going to a shitty console. And I said it. As someone who really <laughs> loved it and bought it and has one, it's a shitty console. Or I should say, that is exactly the not the kind of game that you need for that. It's a good console, not for that game. They are not using that console the way it needs to be used. It needs to be... Nintendo needs to get with Telltale and just put point-and-click adventures on that freaking console. It would sell so well because it's so much better for point-and-click than freaking the the either of the, the big consoles, the, the PlayStation or the xbox but you know they don't listen to me why would they listen to me i just play games <laughs> bitter much uh anybody else uh that's all i got at the moment okay uh, then you look nah i'll just listen and then i'll bring up the other one later uh xbox one is officially tanked it's released in japan oh, really, really? Oh. Anybody want to guess how many consoles it sell, sold in the first week? Or well, weekend, first weekend. Okay, wait. Did anybody really expect it to do well? No, I mean, no. what the 360 happened. All right. Keep that in mind. I'll give you this. The 360 sold 123,000, well, almost 124,000 units its opening weekend in Japan when it came out. Anybody want to take a guess on how many Xbox Ones were sold in its opening weekend? Three. <laughs> 17. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. What? No. 23,000 consoles hmm. in the hmm. entire country of Japan. How much did the PlayStation 4 sell in Japan? Because I heard that it actually wasn't doing well over there. Uh, what else would? Yeah, it is. PlayStation 4 is huge in Japan. Um, okay, and we want to compare... Opening weekends or just overall? Uh, opening weekends. PlayStation for sales. Um, what was it? De debut? Yeah, I've seen, I've got like three articles about why PS4 struggling in Japan. Let's see. Xbox One told 24,000 units the first four days it failed in Japan, according to data from N to Brain and Famitsu. Or to be more precise, and I'm reading this out of Game Industry Biz, dot biz. Or to be more precise, the Xbox One sold 23,562 units between Thursday, September 4th and Sunday, September 7th. Japan has always been a problematic market for Microsoft's console business, blah, blah, blah. By, the, by way of comparison... Sony sold more than 320,000 units of the PS PlayStation 4 in two days in Japan, and that may be below the company's expectations. Mm. The best-selling Xbox One game during that period was Respawn Entertainment's Titanfall, which shifted m just more than 22,000 units, followed by Kinect Sports Rivals with just under 15,000. And the figures for both games include copies bundled with the day one edition of the console yeah i was watching um looking so at, wait it sold how many did ps4 sell in its first two days two days three hundred twenty thousand. Three hundred twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. after uh five months it's only sold 620 total yeah yeah so it really slid off. It's it's. I'm kind of surprised, but yes. And but then again, it's nowhere comparison to twenty four thousand units. No, but it seems like in Japan four days, is three a days. tough market for consoles in general. Yeah, yeah. They have way too many other cool. Um, I don't know. You you've never been. Oh man, mm -hmm. oh, electronic stores in Japan. <gasps> oh my god. 15 floors of just like, oh, why don't we have that here in the United States? <laughs> oh, oh, just unbelievable, awesome stuff in Japan. So, um, anyway, uh, the other thing is, did you see about the whole Destiny advertising 
on even though Destiny was available on both the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, but how Microsoft was not allowed to advertise Destiny. Really? No, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, uh, see, I figured you'd bring that, so I didn't look it up. Really? Destiny uh, Xbox adverts. Um, here we go. And I'm going to re- read this pretty much straight out of Kotaku, and I'm sorry I don't have, I'm not better um, prepared for this one, because I figured for sure Nick would bring this. So here's the deal, is that Destiny was not allowed to be advertised by Xbox, for Xbox, by Microsoft. Um, the, it was a, an exclusive advertising contract so if you had advertising for destiny it had to be on playstation 4 and that's because they playstation you know sony's worked out a little deal so if microsoft wanted to advertise destiny they would have to do it in the context of it being on a playstation 4 and saying here's destiny destiny on a playstation 4 Destiny on a playstation 4 but also available on xbox one and they were not at all cool about that. So what Microsoft did is it released a bunch of really snarky ads that would advertise things that weren't a game named Destiny. One of them being a perfume bottle <laughs> that says Destiny with a little Xbox thing on it. And with the with the um, um, the text that says, okay, so here's the lowdown. Destiny is actually an epic new first-person shooter available on Xbox. Thing is, we don't have permission to run adverts for the game, so we didn't. Thanks for smelling that something was up. Now get the game and become a legend. And then it would have a button that would say, order now, and it would take you to the Xbox, the play, uh, Xbox store. And uh, yeah, those got yanked really fast. Really? Yeah, I mean technically they're they're keeping with the uh, the the they're, they're keeping with the spirit of it, but yeah, yeah it, they were fo- posted on the Xbox UK's um, Twitter and Facebook accounts, um, and so um, yeah, the thing is that it was a big dig at Activision for making this exclusive advertising, which is the first time I've ever heard this an exclusive advertising contract. Um, but the. Uh, it was like maybe a day, day and a half that it was up there. But then, of course, they were yanked because Activision was like, no, you can't do that. So they yanked it and said and replaced it with a website that says, hi, there's there are some great Xbox One offers available at the moment. Please check with retailers for more information. So I guess somebody yelled at Microsoft. Here. I gotta hand it to him. That's pretty clever. Yeah, and it's it's really it's really well done. If you look up on Kotaku, it's the article's called called "Snarky New Xbox Ad Says They're Not Allowed to Advertise Destiny." Right back. Okay, I've been, I've been <clears throat> looking for that. So I've been scrolling through here as you've been talking. All right, I'll find send you it. the link. I'll send you the link. Because I'm good. In fact, I will put the link into. So everybody can enjoy it in the chat room, which if you're listening to this after the fact, this is why you need to join the chat room because you get things like links. Woo-hoo. <laughs> it's pretty good, huh? That's a, that's a good ad. That's a good ad. <laughs> uh, so um, anything else did you bring? Oh, by the way, there there is now a Robin Williams tribute in World of Warcraft. Somebody sent that to me. I think it was uh, Heartbreak Ridge. On yeah, Twitter. I think they're putting that in the uh, in the new expansions coming out. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. That's that's needed to be there. That's definitely a good thing. And um, let's see. Uh, I guess that there's some Xbox Ones out there that are super super noisy, and Microsoft says that they're going to replace them. Yeah, um, it's really bad. A, a number now that the Xbox has kind of launched in other places like Japan and Portugal and Greece, a lot more of these particularly noisy Xbox ones are coming out. And so, um, you know, Xbox Microsoft says it's a small number of Xbox owners, but it's small enough expo- number of Xbox, large enough, I should say, number of Xbox owners that they're actually going to replace these because they don't replace things. Unless it's a lot of people. Huh. Huh, that's surprising. I haven't 
read anything about that. Yeah. Um, the yeah, it's a. It's it's I don't know. I, I, would I notice if there was an Xbox One making so much noise because I'm so used to the noisy 360 that I'd be like, ah, it's just a Microsoft thing. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. So really, you only brought one article. Uh, I have another slight one. Yeah. Apparently, the Shadow of the Colossus movie has a director. But I still don't think that that's ever getting made. I think that, that if if they actually made all the video game movies that they say they'd be making, we would have a year of video game movies between yeah. Angry Birds and Minecraft and Shadow of the Colossus. Although apparently they have officially wrapped filming for Warcraft, and there's just like a year of CG and post production work left. That's still going super so. They've slow. actually. They've put enough money into that 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 will come out. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't I, know how I feel about that. Too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, let's just can we all agree right now the, the Warcraft movie is going to be awful. Ah, uh, no, it's directed by the guy that did Moon. Moon was really good. How do you? What was Moon? The one with um, uh, Sam Rockwell on the moon. Kind of. I don't want to spoil too much. Beep. I have no idea. It's called You Should Watch It. All right. It's a good movie. I will. Everyone, you should go watch Moon. Okay. I'll go do that. In my vast amounts of spare time when I'm not playing games. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, this just hit on Joystick. Uh, remember we were talking about the Apple Watch? Mm-hmm. Already EA has two teams that are prototyping games for the Apple Watch. Ah. Uh. So it, it, it's kind of more because it's color and because it's got a touch screen it's kind of a little bit more um, and it's kind of they're pretty smart that they've gotten only the touch screen but you know like the little dial at the, you know the little gear at the side with other watches where you would wind the watch that's actually yeah. a scroll wheel so it's hmm. kind of a pretty good so far it looks like it seemed like the design Ooh. was was pretty cool but yeah, they're, it's it's definitely more um, conducive to things like games than the Pebble. The Pebble's kind of you know low tech, two you know black and black and well gray. It's definitely old school like flip phone telephones, like the old Nokia brick telephones compared to the iPhone or the iWatch. Um. Um, oh, uh, um, let's see. Somebody mentioned it in the chat room that apparently a lot of the foreign Xbox ones don't actually have all the features that the American really? ones have. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was reading that one also in, uh, in joystick that, you know, they rolled out all the, 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 I mean, they actually rolled out to 28 regions. I know that we've mentioned, you know, Greece and, Japan, but they actually rolled out to 28 regions this month. This was kind of a big month for the Xbox One. And um, console owners in some countries are noticing that voice commands are entirely absent from some of them. Like the Swedish Xbox One has no voice commands. Oh. Um, and others are reporting that many of the games and add-on content packs are missing some from the regional marketplaces. Mm. Games like Super Time Force Contrast and Power Star Golf are not available in Sweden and other Tier 2 countries that are getting the Xbox. So, um, And then also uh, players in Netherlands, Sweden, Finland, I'm reading out of Joystick, Players in Netherlands, Sweden, Finland, and UK also report that Killer Instinct is missing its Ultra Edition content, including a bundled port of the original Killer Instinct arcade game. So it's... Some of these consoles in foreign countries are not fully tricked out the way that the Americans are. With that, and Which wouldn't necessarily have been a bad thing, except Xbox didn't mention it. Microsoft didn't say that might have be a case. And you wouldn't yeah. know... Until you, uh, um, until you got it home, which is kind of a big fuck you. Yeah, that would kind of suck. Yeah. I mean, how would that feel? You finally get the Xbox One. You've heard so much about it. Heard so much about games like Titanfall. 
you'd finally get your next gen console. I know how excited I was to get my PlayStation 4. But you finally get your next gen console and it's it's not it's missing. Oh, it's kind of like NHL 14 or 15. Yeah, it's the, missing shit that should the have been there. <laughs> you, you're shaking the box out looking for something. It's like, hello, <laughs> hello, hello. Is there a code? Do I got to download something? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they could say, I'm sure a lot of these things might be added with an update, kind of like NHL 15. But still, it's kind of like, really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. You're just going to ship out a partial game or a partial console? Just to ship it? Um, so, well, looks like, you know, have you found anything while we were dancing and making noise, Dick? No. I'm out. You're out? Wow. I, I'm sick. I need to go get food and maybe take a nap. Yeah. You've got, you came down with a pox plague. Pax plague. Oh, you Pax did? Box. Oh, that sucks, Nick. Yeah, I'm, I have, knock on wood, never come down with Pax Pox. Should have done it this year because I was really, really, really tired and pushed myself and then we drank way too much. We did yeah. do a lot of drinking, Nick. Yeah, that one day. Yeah. Yeah, we got really hammered and then we got more beer and um, bought coffee cups, <laughs> paid for the coffee, but we only got the cup. Filled it up with more cider and went and played Diablo 3 up in the console share area. I got to play that. I love that game. It is It is a fun game. What? Nick, what did you think of it? Is this the first time you played Diablo 3? No, or? I've played it. I played it on 360. I just played it for a couple hours with you guys. Right, but you hadn't played it on the Xbox. Oh, I guess, were we, were we playing it on the 360 or the PlayStation 4? Uh, 360. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So how was it? Did you buy it and then sell it, or no? I just bought it and played it for an hour, and then never went back to it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did you know that Shadow of Mordor got um, uh, delayed? The last gen versions. Oh, only the last gen versions. I yes. did not know that. So, suck it, all you people <laughs> with old consoles. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's still I I'm I think of all the games that packs this year, that's the one I'm kind of the most looking forward to. The one I'm the most curious about is oh. The Order. Okay. Actually, I don't know. It's a ton of a tie. I'm really looking forward to Shadow to um Evolve as well. Uh if you want to quickly get an overview of all the locations in Destiny, uh I put a link in the chat of Skype and Spreaker. Uh huh. Of a video that just shows you everything. Oh. Nice. Um, oh, hey. I know that we had said that we were going to do some details about giving away the PAX swag bag. Nick and I have not talked about this. Goalie and I have not talked about this. Pissboy and I have not talked about this. we got to sit down. Seriously, guys, we have to sit down this week and figure out how to give away this monstrous pile of t-shirts and shit here hold on a second i'm gonna go over the t-shirts so you guys know about it stay right there nick talk to them for a second uh howdy there folks how's it going nick you suck <laughs> <laughs> you freaking suck all right so here's the t-shirts i'm gonna go through them one at a time and i know you can't see them but i will tell you we have t-shirts from drive club uh, let's see. What's this? Er, um, Bloodborne. Oh, by the way, you never talked about Bloodborne on the show. Oh, oh. we talked about it on the, the PAX show. Did we? Okay. Yeah. The Talos Principle is another t-shirt we have. A uh, t-shirt from The Order 1866. T-shirt from um, Borderlands the Pre-Sequel. T-shirt from Shadow of Mordor. T-shirt from Sunset Overdrive, which I donated to you. I gave up my T-shirt, so you may have it. T-shirt from uh, Boo Bunny Plague. T-shirt for 
that is oh that's another order it's 1866 so i'll take that and t-shirt from another shadow Mortar. okay so yeah that's we got those t-shirts i am taking the t-shirt from um uh, 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 not get out of hell uh saints row yeah i'm taking the t-shirt from saints row yeah it was get out of hell because it's purple and it goes in my hair but yeah we've got all these plus we've got we, well, we, where would we get the um, deck of playing cards? Do you remember? Uh, oh, I think that... No. Oh, that was from uh, Dragonfin Soup. Dragonfin Soup, that's right. Playing cards. Um, there was a little um, plum bob uh, head piece so that it looks like you have a plum bob that lights up from Sims. There's a bottle cap. Um... It was a a, a keychain. I think it's a keychain bottle cap that but I can't remember who gave us that one. Oh, I know what that's. No, was it? I forget who that was. Anyway, there's a ton of stuff that's uh, in this pa- the swag bag. Um, we will. Where should we put the information on how to win the swag bag? What do you think, Nick Gully? Um, mm. should we do Website. it on the show or next week? So, yeah. All right. Yeah. The show next week, we will have details on how we're going to give this away because it's such a big pack. We hate just giving it away randomly and we want, we're going to post pictures of all the t-shirts so that you can see them and um, put them, put it all together in a nice big bag and mail it to the winner. So might have to do a little something to earn it. It's a pretty neat pack. It's not just something you just want to chuck. Um, it Black Street Royce says a bottle cap or a bottle cap opener. It was a bottle cap, I believe it's a bottle cap keychain. So, um, I've got it on the table. So, here, you know what? Nah, no, nah, I'll just leave it there. We'll, I'll tell you more and more about it later. We'll make the list. I'll put the list up on the website, gamehounds.net. So, you will see the list with photographs of the t shirts and the swag so that you will see what you're going to get when we decide to give it out which will be, we'll probably put up, give you the details next week and then give it away probably the week after that, maybe two weeks after that. So uh, get thinking about what, what you want to do with these t-shirts. The, all the t-shirts are either in size large or extra large because we wanted it to fit everybody or all of you is the case may be. Um, so is there anything else we want to add? Oh, I know. Um, we are the first episode on the RSS feed, on the iTunes feed of the first day and change of interviews that we did at PAX is up. The second one, which is another hour long show, which was from day two and a little bit of day three is coming. Um, it's actually done and I've already edited and processed. I did it, did the processing last night. It's now bounced to disc. I'm going to put that on the RSS feed today. And then, um, then we're going to have one, probably hopefully fit in the last show all at once. Cause I don't, th- I think it might be slightly more than an hour. I've been trying to break it up into one hour chunks. So you don't have to listen to three, three and hours and change of interviews all at once. So you expect to look for that or expect to see that. You will see that on the RSS feed and we will also announce it on the GameHounds.net page in addition to the Facebook. So um, so next week, if you are in the New York City area, um, next not this coming weekend, but next weekend, I will be at the New York City Makers Fair. So come out and see us at the Maker Fair in New York. Um, I'm going to be leaving. I figure I'm going to leave pretty much hopefully right after the show next week or the next morning. So yeah, that'll be the last thing I do before we leave for, for um, New York. So you guys have been Nick Gully. Where are you? We're here. All right. Yeah, just tired. Uh, yeah, I, understand. I was up late last night. Too. I got home from work and I was playing NHL 15 while you guys were playing destiny. We actually were chatting for a little bit last yeah. night. And we had a listener who I joined him and he's like, oh my God, I had you on my friends, but I never actually figured you'd play with me. Let me make something perfectly clear. We love to play with our listeners. If you are a listener 
add us to your friends list. I'm Gamer Edie. Nick is, or Goalie is Gamer Goalie. Nick is Evil Alsop. And it's, it's, is it E V O L? Yes. Yeah, Evil Alsop. E V O L A L S O P. Look for us on PlayStation 4. Add us to your friends list, especially if you see us playing Destiny and there's room. Join us. We love to have people put your headset in, put your microphone on, and talk to us. That's why we're there. I, I, all to this day, I'm always surprised that people are like, "Oh, I want to respect your privacy." If I wanted my privacy respected, I wouldn't be a podcaster. Just join us. If we're busy, we will let you know, and we'll hook up with you later. Just join us. So anyway, it was really great playing with a a longtime listener who had, had never kind of felt comfortable just jumping into a game jump into our games we enjoy that maybe not eh, do you enjoy it nick i enjoy it i love it love yeah. it when i found somebody new yeah Got a few friend requests this week yeah from different people and couple, you know the best thing to do is when you send a friend request is what what a couple people do they just put you know like listen to the show or love the show or it's, something like that that way we know you know okay this is legit it's you know whatever sometimes you get a friend request like oh, who's this person you know and you hate to say no, but when you put in something and they just say, hey, listen to the show, anything like that, then, okay, yeah, now we know. Well, now we're good. Approve. <laughs> Corey Wallace in the chat room calls you emo, Alsop. <laughs> <laughs> Black Sphere Void calls you evolve, Alsop. <laughs> I like that one better. <laughs> and uh, Black Sphere Void also mentions Al Jazeera covering the drone show. Um, no, Al Jazeera is not going to be covering the drone show. Uh, uh, I was on, just to clear that up, Al Jazeera did a segment on the domestic drone market in the United States. It was for actually there's something called AJ Plus, which is one of their kind of tech shows uh, for Al Jazeera America. And that's why it's AJ Plus, Al Jazeera America. Um, and it was us, uh, the Game of Drones people and a bunch of other people. And I ended up getting like this little cameo that they were at this event that was showing people actually Com, you know, doing combat with their drones, and um, my drone and myself got one of the funnier things that's ever popped out of my mouth. We watched it all together, all the gamer drone people, and laughed our asses off about it because I don't even remember saying it, but it's pretty funny. So it's something called it's under uh, AJ Plus is the user is the uh, a YouTube channel that it's on. You can look it up on YouTube. It's about drones. So show get bumped off Al Jazeera for another beheading. <laughs> no, that's Al Jazeera. There's Al Jazeera and Al Jazeera America. Al Jazeera America was the one that bought Current TV. So, and I think AJ Plus is kind of a division of the Current TV, you know, past Current TV, you know, San Francisco based stuff. But it's actually a very thoughtful, very interesting piece about, you know, it it does not pull any punches about the concerns about the drones. Uh, drones being held domestically, you know, being used by the general public and being used to do things that some people shouldn't be doing. I don't do that. Other mm. people at Game of Drones don't do it, but they did talk about the possibilities of people using it incorrectly. Also, the possibilities of people using it as a great tool. So, but this isn't a drone podcast. So, anyway, do you want to close this out? Yeah. All right. So, let's close this out. You have been listening to Game House episode, what was it, 279 on September 10th, 2014. I've been E.D. Sellers. With me, he's been Holy Goalie and Nick Nicola. All right, we, have, we did go over a couple of ways to get a hold of us, but I'll do it again. Gamehounds at gmail.com. That's our email. Our website, gamehounds.net. That's where you can find the latest and greatest information on what's uh, the newest shows. Uh, whenever we have information to give out to the public, um, to you, you, you guys, uh, GameHelms.net is a good place for it. The other good place is our Facebook page. Look us up as The Game Hounds, uh, T-H-E, The Game Hounds on Facebook. In addition, if you ever want to join us live where we have a great time, the chat room, we have the best goddamn chat room. So much funny stuff. Great. It, it, uh, the chat room oh my god I love the chat room you don't see half the stuff that goes on in there and most of the stuff I can't talk about but the chat room is so much fun 
Go to Spreaker.com. That's Spreaker with it's speaker with an R. Spreaker.com. Sign up for it. We do record this on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we would love to have you in the, join us in the chat room because it's, it's popping. <laughs> and uh, other ways to get a hold of us, our Twitter feed is GameHounds. And there is our voice and chat line, our voice and text line. That number is... 304-300-989. We absolutely love to hear people uh, leave voicemails. And, you know, if you leave a voicemail, you could be part of the show and we will play your voicemail and then make fun of it or <laughs> say that you're... Just text and say hi. I, I chat with the people all the time on text. And it just never makes the show because it's with this chat. Yeah. You so. know? So anyway, uh, yeah, text it, use that number, and uh, uh, anything else? What else am I missing? I've had too much coffee. Can you tell? Uh, I think we got everything. You got the website, you got the Facebook. Yep. Uh, uh, got the Twitter, Game Hounds. Also. You know our PSN? Yeah. All right. Yeah, got the PlayStation. Uh, we got uh, the, the number to call if you want Nick off the show. <laughs> yeah. we, got, we got everything all squared away. All right, cool. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us. Everybody in the chat room, you are awesome. We will talk to you next week. And uh, don't forget to listen for the second show of our PAX Prime interviews. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Somebody send me some mail.